Welcome to Lecture Online, and here we're going to do another exercise in how to determine angles in three dimensions. So imagine here we have a plane. Suspended from that plane is an object that has a certain amount of weight, so weight equals mg. And it's suspended by four cables. The length of each cable is L1, L2, L3, and L4. All cables are connected to some point on the plane. The object here is 1.6 meters below the plane. So this is the origin right there. And you can see that the first cable, L1, is connected to a point right here, 1.2 meters away from the origin along the z-axis. The second uh, connection here for line 2 is connected 0.78 meters to the left on the x-axis from the origin, so away from the origin on the x-axis. The third line is connected to a point here which is 0.4 meters away from the origin in the x-direction and 0.86 meters away from the origin in the uh, z-direction, the negative z-direction, negative x-direction. And finally, line 4 here is connected to a point on the plane 0.4 meters in the positive z-direction and 1.3 meters in the positive x-direction. So the question is, what is the angle between... Ah, that's a good question here. What's the angle between the line line 1, line 2, line 3, and line 4 to the x-axis, to the y-axis, to the z-axis, and again to the x-axis. So in the first case, what is the angle between line 1 and the x-axis? What is the angle between line 2 and the y-axis? What is the angle between line 3 and the z-axis? And what is the angle between line 4 and the x-axis? So that's how we determine angles between particular lines in space or particular vectors in space these all probably have tension on them, so you can think of them as vectors. So what is the, the angle between the vectors and a particular x, y, or z axis? All right. The way we find that, of course, is to realize that the direction cosines, so the cosine of theta sub 1 in the x direction is equal to the x component of line 1 divided by the magnitude of line 1. So that's how we find the direction cosine. The direction cosine of theta sub 2 in the y direction is equal, or theta sub 2 relative to the y direction is equal to the component of line 2 in the y direction divided by the magnitude of line 2. The direction cosine of theta sub 3, uh, theta sub 3 z, because it's relative to z direction, is equal to the component in the z direction of line 3 divided by the magnitude of line 3. And then finally we can say that the direction cosine of uh, line 4 relative to the x direction is equal to the magnitude of line 4 in the x direction divided by the magnitude of line 4. So we do realize that we need to find the magnitude of the length of each of those four lines, each of those four strings holding up the weight at the bottom here. So we can say that L1 is equal to the square root of L1 sub x squared plus L1 sub y squared plus L1 sub z squared which is equal to the square root of L1 sub x. So the, the direction, the distance, or the x component of this line right here, well, since it's right on the z-axis, we can see that there is no x component because it's, it's falling right underneath the z-plane right here, the z-y-plane, so therefore this is equal to 0, plus... The direction in the z is 1.2 meters, so that would be, oh, that would be 1.2 squared. And then what about the y direction here? Uh, in the y direction, that would be 1.6. All of them will be 1.6 in the y direction, of course. So what is the length of L1? So it's 1.6 squared plus 1.2 squared equals, take the square root, and that's equal to 2. Finding the length 2, length 2 is equal to the square root of L2 in the x direction squared plus L2 in the y direction squared plus L2 in the z direction squared is equal to the square root. Notice that in the, in the y case, in the y direction, it's always 1.6, so 1.6 squared. How about the x direction? Well, it's 0.78, even though it's negative 0.78, since we squared, we don't really care that it's negative, right? Negative 0.78, quantity squared plus 1.6 squared plus in the z direction, notice it's right on the x-axis right here, so there's no, uh, no distance in the z direction, that's 0 squared, and that's equal to, so 0.78 squared plus 1.6 squared equals, 
take the square root, we get 1.78. That is the length of L2. Now let's find the length of L3. So the length of L3 is equal to the square root of L sub 3 in the x direction squared plus L sub 3 in the y direction squared plus L sub 3 in the z direction squared is equal to L3, which is this line right here, in the x direction, notice it's 0.4 meters away from the, the uh, z axis here. So we have 0.4 squared. Even though it's negative, we don't care because we're going to square it anyway, plus 1.6 squared, because it's 1.6 meters below the plane there, plus the z direction, it's 0.86 away from the origin in the z direction. So what is that equal to? So we have 0.4 squared plus 1.6 squared plus 0.86 squared equals, take the square root, we get 1.86. And finally, L sub 4 is equal to the square root of L sub 4 in the x direction squared plus L sub 4 in the y direction squared plus L sub 4 in the z direction squared is equal to the square root of. So now we're looking at line 4. In the x direction, it's 1.3 meters to the right of the origin, so 1.3 squared. It'll be 1.6 squared for the y direction because it's 1.6 below the plane. And for the z direction, it's 0.4. So plus 0.4 squared. And so that gives us 1.3 squared plus 1.6 squared plus 0.4 squared equals, take the square root, 2.1. So now we have the length, of course, in meters, because these are all in meters, in meters of the four cables or four ropes holding up the weight right here. Now we want to find the angles. We use the direction cosine. So we use theta sub 1 x. That means the angle between line 1 and the x-axis is equal to the arc cosine of L sub 1 in the x-direction divided by L sub 1, which is equal to arc cosine of L sub 1 in the x-direction. So L sub 1, notice the component in the x direction is 0 because it is right on the yz plane. So there's no component x that's equal to 0. So 0 divided by L sub 1. L sub 1 is equal to 2. And the arc cosine of 0, that means it is 90 degrees, right? So the arc cosine of 0 is 90 degrees, which means that L1 makes a 90 degree angle with the x-axis. Another way of looking at that, of course, is take the L1 and put it over here, and then you can see that the angle between there is indeed a right angle. All right, let's go for theta sub 2. Theta sub 2 in the y, relative to the y-axis is the arc cosine of L sub 2 in the y-direction divided by L sub 2. It's equal to the arc cosine of L sub 2 in the y-direction. L sub 2 in the y-direction, of course, all the... Uh, lengths relative to the y direction is 1.6 divided by L sub 2 and L sub 2 is 1.78 so 1.6 divided by 1.78 take the arc cosine of that and we get 25.98 make it 26.0 degrees 26.0 degrees all right so now we found the angle between L2 and the y-axis now, let's find theta sub 3, and that's relative to the z-axis. Theta sub 3 relative to the z-axis is equal to the arc cosine of L3z divided by L3, which is equal to the arc cosine of L3 in the z-direction. L3 in the z-direction is 0.86, so we have L3. It is 0.86 meters away from the origin in the z-direction. So 0.86 divided by the length of L3, L3 is 1.86 meters. So we take 0.86 divided by 1.86 equal, take the arc cosine of that, and we get 62.5 degrees. And finally, the angle, so that's the arc cosine of L sub 4 in the, did I say, oh, I need the x direction right here. I said x direction, isn't it? So in the x direction divided by L sub 4, so that's the arc cosine of L4 in the x direction, 1.3. That's L4. It is 1.3 away from the origin. 1.3 divided by 
So we have 1.3 divided by 2.1, take the R cosine, and it's 51.8 degrees. So now we have found the angle between L1 and the x-axis, 90 degrees, between L2 and the y-axis, 26 degrees, between L3 and the z-axis, 62.5 degrees, and finally between L4 and the x-axis, 51.8 degrees. That's how we use the direction cosines to find angles in three dimensions. That's how it's done.